everyone. Welcome to our show. I am so excited to spend another fabulous Tuesday with you. I am your host, Misty Doan. And as always, we have Liz. Hello. Helping out behind the camera. Hi, Liz. Hi. And shouting out any questions we might have along the way. I am super, super excited about this week's show because I get to invite my dear friend, Brittany, that I met at uh, Quilt Market a few years ago. She was willing to come on. Hello, Brittany. Are hey there. How are you? I'm great. You want to introduce yourself to everybody? Sure. My name is Brittany Lloyd from Lo and Behold Stitchery, and I'm here in Raleigh, North Carolina, and um, I, yeah, I'm ready to get started. Awesome. Well, and one of the things that kind of has drawn me to you, Brittany, as I've gotten to know you more since I met you at market is it sounds like you have a great connection to your grandma and that she was a quilter, and that's where a lot of your love of quilting has come from. Is there, in, is there anything else that draws you to quilting, or is that really the gist of it? Um, yeah, so I started quilting um, kind of in honor of my grandmother. Uh, she passed away, and I inherited many of her quilting supplies and many of her quilts that she like made for herself. And I kind of got this idea that what if I started quilting in her memory? And uh, and so that's kind of how I started. I just sort of taught myself and piecemealed together uh, different techniques and tutorials. And, um, and so then I started designing quilt patterns. And then one day I had the idea, what if I sort of create this collection of quilts that is inspired by the quilts that she made. And I put my own modern spin um, on them, both in the technique and in how they look. And um, and so that's kind of what I've been doing. And that's kind of what I did with this puff quilt, so. I love that, Brittany. It, it, it's such a connection for me to you just because my love of quilting started with my grandma too. Um, I have a very, very similar story. My grandma also passed away. Um, and up until she passed away, she had cancer and, you know, she lost the use of her hand and I get, got to sit with her and sew with her up until the very end. And, and I also got to inherit some of her supplies and her quilts. So it's truly just a treasure. And I love to see you honor her legacy in such a beautiful way. And the quilts that you've designed are just so stunning. So I'm really grateful for you coming on here and sharing that with, with me and with all of our, um, amazing quilters that are watching along. Um, and like you mentioned, we're going to make this puff quilt today, which is inspired by the one your grandma made you, right? Mm -hmm. It is. Yep. yep. So I have her quilt. Okay, perfect. Here. Oh. It's, um, but I do have a picture of the entire quilt on my website. Um, okay. But she just used a bunch of scrap fabrics that she had. It's very, very heavy. And honestly, I thought that I would never recreate this quilt. It just feels kind of traditional, which I, I like, but I, I could never see myself making a more modern version of it um, until one day I kind of just sat down and started thinking through what that would look like. And, um, and then I came up with a version that I call the ombre puff quilt. And, uh, and that's kind of what started everything. It's, it is stunning. And when you posted it on your Instagram, I was like, oh my goodness, it looks like the coziest pillow to just like wrap up. And the, the beautiful fabrics that you chose really have brought it to life. And like you said, made, made it more modern. It's just stunning. And so hopefully um, we can link to Absolutely. your website. And so we can see full pictures of your beautiful ombre puff quilt. And like she mentioned earlier, you can find her on Instagram at Lo and Behold Stitchery, and you can see all the beautiful quilts that she makes. But we are going to dive into this puff quilt today, which I thoroughly enjoyed making. I was really nervous to do it. I, it's so different than traditional quilting, but I loved it. So do you want to uh, tell everybody how to get started? Yeah. So um, there are a few different ways to create a puff quilt. And as I was sort of starting my journey with thinking about how I wanted to recreate it, um, I, I studied the quilt that my grandmother made. And I kind of, my first iteration of my idea to create this was to make these little pillows. Mm -hmm. So essentially you have a smaller square on the back, a larger square on the bottom. And then when you sew them together, you create pleats and then you sew the pillows together. But I didn't like this method because it, it ended up being very bulky. So when you put both of them right sides together, 
you really have to uh, compress the pillows. And it was just, it was kind of a lot. So I went back to the drawing boards and I thought, um, what is a better way to make this? Because if I'm going to be using this method, I don't think I'm going to enjoy it very much. Um, so around that same time, I uh, we were going through some of my grandmother's sewing supplies and we found, it, it wasn't this exact puff, but it was um, very similar. It was basically an unstuffed puff. So there's a little pocket okay, with, with only three sides sewn. Kind of forms a little um, little ravioli or a. Um, I love that you call it that. Yeah, <laughs> so cute. And so let's let's get a close up here in studio so we can show um, what this looks like. And you can see we've got stitching, like Brittany said, on three sides with the little pleats, and then it's open on one end. And that's how we're going to add the um, the polyfill to make it puffy. Yep. So essentially you make a bunch of these pockets. So you make all of your pockets so that there are three sides sewn. And this seam, you want to use either a scant quarter inch seam or an eighth of an inch somewhere in between, but you want it to be a little bit more of a smaller seam allowance. And that is because you will then create rows. Oh so yeah, look at all those puffs. Isn't it pretty? It so, so you pretty. set all of the um, the rows or the puffs together to create individual rows and you want to make sure that the opening let me find my camera here <laughs> the opening is on the same side of each of the rows okay well let's dive into making the like let's show them how to make a puff I can do that here yeah and then mm -hmm. we can sew them together and if you have any tips or tricks along the way just be sure to interject and and share with us because like I said I, uh, this is my first time making one of these. I followed Brittany's pattern. Exactly. It was super helpful. It's a, a free, uh, pattern that she has on her website. And I think we'll link to that as well. Absolutely. Um, so you can be sure to check that out. It's really thorough and she has even more great, uh, video tutorials that walk you through all of the steps. So she's got all the things covered for us to make this as easy as possible. So to start with, uh, like Brittany mentioned, we're using a charm pack. And this collection is called Opal Sky, Five Carat Gems by Wilmington. It's beautiful um, shades of blue, teal, and purple uh, variegated fabrics. Just really fun. And then you're also going to need one bag of polyfill, um, some pearl cotton to do your ties if you opt to quilt it with that method, and just some scrap or backing fabric to make the backs of your puffs. Remember, this isn't going to show, so this can just be anything that's going to hide you can, behind. You can give some old fabric you don't like so much a purpose. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And so our charm packs are going to remain five inches. And then for the backs of the puff, we want to cut all of that uh, backing to four and a half inches. You can use whatever size square you want, really. Brittany, you mentioned that when we were talking before. Um, any size square, you just want to make the back side a half inch smaller all the way around, right? Okay, yep. so let's dive into this. So we're going to, when I started, I'm just going to line up the top corner so that they're completely in line of my two squares. So because this is a little bigger, you can see it hanging off down on this end. And then we're going to go ahead and make a little pleat. So I just like to line up this bottom edge and then make a little fold so that it's all lined up and then zoom down. And like Brittany said, we wanna make sure we're using either a scant quarter inch or an eighth of an inch, a real skinny seam, because when we go back to sew these together, we wanna to make sure that this first line of stitching is covered when we sew our rows together. And so you can uh, just chain piece these and just do one side at a time and then turn and do the next side. But just to show you guys, I'm just gonna go ahead and do the three sides of the pocket. So you can see there's our first one there. And following the same idea, we can just pull this one up and, and make a little pleat. Eyeballing, you're not having to make sure that pleat's perfectly nope, in the center, right? Not at all. Okay. And that's why your background piece is a half an inch bigger, or is your front pretty piece is a half an inch bigger exactly. than your back piece is to give you room to make that pleat. Yes, and I came unthreaded. So give me just a second here and then we'll get going again. 
And Brittany, your original pattern wasn't quite for charm packs. It was a little bit smaller. Is that right? Yeah. So I measured the size puffs that my grandmother used and she used four and a half inch squares for the top of the puffs. And so I wanted to more closely mimic that, but I have definitely well, used charm packs for the top of the quilt. I've even seen people use squares that are smaller. So like a three oh, wow. and a half. Oh my goodness. For the top of the puff and to have more of a, um, more, more, even more puffy than this. That would so. be amazing. I can't <laughs> even imagine making it smaller, <laughs> but I love it. I would love to see it. So I'm going to have to Google that, I think, and see if I can find pictures of that. Cause like, yeah. And people have used these for like animal beds, like a dog bed, or, um, they make great baby quilts to lay on and do like tummy time or whatever. Um, but my husband, he uses his every night on his recliner. Cause it's like a <laughs> blanket. So. It is so cozy. Um, like it's funny that you mentioned that it's great for animal beds because when I was sitting with it on my lap to tie it, my dog Iris was like, that's for me. Like she wanted to get on top of it so bad. And I had to be like, no, no, stay, stay she was down. Obsessed. This one is not for you pup. But, um, yeah, it's funny. It, it would make a great dog bed, but I have a new niece that's coming soon. So I think I'm going to give this to her. Cause like you said, it's, it's so soft. It'd be perfect for tummy time or just, you know, playing with some toys, um, above her head. So mm -hmm. I think that'll be great for that. So I'm super, super excited. So let's do this la the third side, I should say of our little ravioli pocket, like you said. So again, we're just going to line up that bottom corner where we're headed and let this kind of gather up and eyeball making that pleat there in the middle and then using that eighth of an inch or scant quarter inch we're just going to sew all the way down the side and it looks like it's a little easier to make that pleat fold towards you so that your sewing machine doesn't try to catch exactly. it exactly so, otherwise okay. it could catch on the foot and so i did usually uh, push the pleat towards myself and so cool. that's just what we're going to repeat over and over and over again is making all of these i used uh two charm packs to make this. And so I had a few left over. I think it is eight by 10 is the layout that I did. And so Brittany, do you want to talk about how you go about laying out to get the ombre effect? Yeah. So I, the ombre effect was kind of my modern spin that I wanted to add to the quilt. So if you want it to be a little bit more traditional, or if you want to do like some sort of um, repeating nine patch pattern, then you can really do any pattern with these colors that you want. But the ombre sort of uh, rainbow gradient was how I wanted to make it a little bit more modern. So normally what I do is I will pick out what color families I have. So with this quilt, I had the teal and the purple and the blue, and I put my more saturated colors on the corners. And then I had the different fading colors in the middle so that it looks like the colors are fading into each other and the transition sort of happens in the middle. But Missy, I think you said that your quilt was a little bit different than this. And so that's yeah. kind of the, is you can play around with your squares and see what looks good to you and then just go with that. So exactly. So I opted to put the teal, it just kind of ran through the middle and I still love it. I have purple on both corners. So my sister-in-law that is having uh, my niece that will be here very soon loves purple. And so I wanted to make sure that the purple was like kind of the draw, like I guess. And it felt bit. like it was anchoring it that way on both ends. And so that's why I opted to, to do that. And I love how it turned out. And I love that in your pattern, you include all different kinds of layout options, which is so fun because I had only seen your ombre version. And so until I saw the different layouts, it, it never even crossed my mind, which you would think I do this all the time. <laughs> I should know there's <laughs> lots of ways to arrange these squares, but um, I didn't. And so I was really grateful that you included those um, to just show all of the different possibilities that we have. So let's uh, sew a few of these together and mm -hmm. make a row. Right. So once you've laid it out and you've decided yeah. what your row is, you're going to sew your row together. Exactly. And so I have still just... not closing up that fourth side. I want to make sure we stress that part. Exactly. So. I have just a bunch of random colors here, but I think that's okay too. Yeah. It can be completely scrappy, however you want it. And so I'm just going to go ahead and sew these three together. And like Brittany mentioned, um, you want to keep your pocket all on the same side as you're going um, to sew these together. So I've got all of my pockets going this way, my opening, 
and I can just now put these right sides together and we'll sew these with a regular quarter inch so that we can't see that scant line that we sewed when we made our pockets. So let's take this over here. We'll just make a row really quick. And can see the total difference between having the filled pockets and the not so filled yes. pockets. Yes. <laughs> on this project was I didn't feel like I had to wrestle around my walking foot. Yeah. Um, and another thing to keep in mind. So I, once I figured out what rows I wanted where and what puffs I wanted in each row, I labeled each row one, two, three, four. That way I kept them in order. And so then I put them in a pile and I brought them all over to my sewing machine um, instead of going back and forth and um, getting rows mixed up. So make sure that you uh, that you remember which row goes where because that'll play an effect, especially if you're doing a specific like ombre layout. If you're doing it random, then it probably doesn't matter. But yeah, I labeled with, it just like that myself. And, and you're right. It works really great. It made it really easy to just go Okay, one, two, three, four, five. I went all the way across to eight um, for this baby quilt size. And it was nice to know that I didn't have to worry about what went where. I just pinned my numbers to the top um, puff all the way across. So I knew and I didn't flip it over, <laughs> you know, um, but it made it really quick. So let's just sew this last one on here. And I want to make sure you guys can see this is going to be tricky with the white backing, but hopefully you guys can see here the two stitch lines. And that first one is our um, initial line that we sewed. And then the one that's farther in is the line that we just stitched to sew it together. So Missy, I'm gonna ask you, go ahead and hold that up. So our camera guy, there you go. Yeah, so you it's can, hard to see with the white on white, but, you can but there's kind of see. two there lines you go. of stitching right next to each other. And then you can see when we open this up, you can't see that That's first totally line. Hidden. It's yep. totally invisible, which is what we're looking for. And so now that I have a few of these, you know, we'll call these our makeshift rows. Obviously, you would keep going for however oh, long you want this to be. And you then, can make this as big as you want. Exactly. And, and Brittany, you've made some really big ones. They're amazing. Yeah, yeah it's very large. I So I've made two. And the most recent one that I made, it it's probably close to a twin size. Okay. So it is very, very large. But my husband, after I made the first size, he was like, I want you to make this next one a little bit bigger. I was like, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I think when husbands love what we love, it's, it's hard not to try and make mm -hmm. them happy. It's like, okay, for you, I'll do it. <laughs> So um, for the filling, how much did you put in to each just puff? Okay, so that's what I did too. It's just like a, a little handful, not too full. And I have to say, when I first started, I think I was using too much fluff. I think it's really tempting to just like stuff as much as you can in there because you want it to have that loft. Um, but I found as I kept going that just a, a small handful was plenty and made it more manageable when I went to sew the rows together. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah. and it definitely makes the quilt more flexible. Mm. So it's kind of, it's more plush. Whereas if you overstuff it, then it's a little bit more rigid. That makes sense. As the end result. So yeah, I definitely think that less is more. I think so it's so. one of those ironies that like yeah. more stuffing actually makes it less puffy. Yeah, it makes it a little bit more stiff, which isn't what we want. And right. so you can see, I've just taken this handful and we're just going to go ahead and add it to each pocket of our row, just like that. I find this part so fascinating, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. And those pleats are what's letting the magic happen. Yeah, so you have exactly. Room. It's letting that um, the polyfill loft up that because we have that extra fabric on the top layer. And so yep. you can see how great that's looking. And now, um, did you do any pressing or anything, Brittany? No. Okay. That was, yeah, but you don't even need your iron. Yeah, so. exactly. I didn't either. I just was curious after the fact, did I miss that? Should I have pressed? <laughs> so I wanted to be sure and ask you, <laughs> but I'm glad to know that you didn't either. And I didn't have any trouble by skipping that nope. step. It worked great. And yeah. so 
just like we did when we were making the puffs, we're going to go ahead and use that scant seam, right? Uh -huh. To yep. close this up. Okay. So now we're, you would do this with your whole long row. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same, same idea that I did when I was making the puffs and pull out the end of my seam here so that I have my backing piece straight. And then you can see this little pleat that is forming. And so we're just going to make sure we have that scant seam. And we're going to go ahead and close up our entire row. And it, it helps if you just make sure that the poly is out of the way so that you're not sewing over any of that. And if you're using those small handfuls, I didn't have any trouble. Okay, so that's another reason to go for that little a, a little bit less. A little bit less, exactly. Mm. Makes it easier to do this part. So okay. you can see here, just kind of holding this to make sure I don't have any pleats on the back side of this and just making this little pleat on the front. There we go. And then this row of pockets is done. And you, like I said, you would continue this for whatever size um, you determine. And then when we go to sew our rows together, you fill this one and then you attach an unstuffed row to the next one. Because like uh -huh. you were showing earlier, if you fill all of them, then you're working with these pillows and it makes it really tricky. So you're just gonna stuff one row at a time. How did you figure that part out? Because I feel like that is so genius. I think I would have gone and filled all of my rows. I don't know. Really? I, <laughs> <laughs> well, it was brilliant. It truly, because uh, like I said, if I hadn't been reading your pattern, which I have to give myself some props because I'm not usually a pattern reader, but I took the time to read through it. And if I hadn't, I would have probably filled all of these rows. And so, right. and I think that would have made it so much more difficult, but you don't, you just fill your first row and then add your second row to it. And so now this is where we're going to use that full quarter inch seam. Cause again, we don't want to see those, um, scant lines that we stitched earlier. This step, it helps if, so say for the bottom row that you just finished, uh -huh. if this is going say the seam is coming towards you it helps to position the top row so that seam is going away from you. right so they, they can kind of lock and nest and nest and, yeah yeah exactly I was going to mention that too since we're just working with squares at this point this is where it becomes much more like traditional piecing because we mm -hmm. can just make those seams go where we want them to go so that they'll intersect and look great Mm -hmm. So you're just nesting your puffs instead of nesting exactly. your, your piece of squares. And the other thing that I thought was so great about this is it's just so forgiving. Like yeah. way more forgiving than I even anticipated because of the, the loft from the puffs. You know, if you do get a little bit off, you're never going to notice. And that's, that's really fun and makes it a great beginner project. And so you can see how that comes together and then you would just stuff this row and keep going and so on and so forth. So pretty awesome. And you can see here, this is where we ended up for the baby quilt size. Such a cool process. I love it <clears throat> so much. And like I said, eight across, 10 down. So we used 80 of the um, 84 squares that would you, you would get out of two charm packs. So, oops, my polyfill fell down. It's a good <laughs> thing we're done with it. <laughs> but anyway, I just think this is so, so fun. And Brittany, now I want to talk about how you chose to bind this. Well, I guess we should cover quilting first. I skipped over that because I'm excited about the binding. <laughs> but let's, let's talk just a little bit about quilting. Um, yours, yeah. Your grandma's was tied, right? Correct. Yes. Okay. And since hers is so heavy, I'm also, I'm feeling it right now. Um, I'm assuming that she also used a layer of batting as well. Okay. So that's part of the reason why it's so heavy is she has the polyfill and the batting. So whenever you're finished sewing your rows together, it's going to look just like a traditional quilt top where you have those raw seams on the back. So you'll need to baste it like you would any other quilt. So yeah. you'll have your backing and then you'll have batting. Some people have chosen not to use batting. 
Um, some people also will use like a thin layer of fleece if they don't want it to be quite so warm and heavy. You could just go with like a thin layer of that. That makes sense. Um, yeah, but I just chose to do the thinnest loft batting that I could find. So um, so I have my, my backing, my batting, and then you put the quilt top uh, right side up. Yep. And then I pin basted it with safety pins. Some people have asked if you can use spray. I haven't tested it with spray with it being a little bit heavy. I kind of worry about that staying together, but you could definitely try. And if it doesn't stay together, then just add some pins. Um, so when I did it, um, because I was worried about keeping my batting and my backing straight while dealing with more loft on this, I wasn't sure how that would work when I went to go baste it. I did go ahead and use a little bit of um, a fusible basting powder for my backing and my batting. So I, okay. I, I basted my backing so it was nice and smooth and then I taped it down and then I pin basted the rest. I so, you, okay. so you basted the two layers with the, with exactly. The okay, cool. And I didn't use a lot. I just basically wanted to just enough. just, just enough to hold it in place. So I was less worried about it shifting around and it worked really well for me. So if, even if you wanted to use a very light spray base to, to put your backing onto the batting itself, um, that I think worked awesome for me. Just not so much for the top. To yeah. The because, because yeah. obviously you can't like, like I love the, uh, quilter select free fuse powder, but you have to press that. And so you can't press through this. And so I knew that wouldn't work through that for that. And I'm not a big fan of spray base because of the odor. Um, and so that's what I did for the backing and the batting. And then I just used curve safety pins to baste um, the puffs to the quilt. Did you baste between every one? I didn't feel like I needed to. I went like every couple and just worked from the center out. Yes, that's exactly what I did. Okay, awesome. So, you know, I just kind of found the middle of my quilt here. Let me pull this over so you guys can see. You know, here's the center and that's where I put my first pin. And then I just uh, worked my way out from there. And it, it went really fast. The basting took no time at all. I was really surprised because I it's been a long time. If you follow me on Instagram, um, I said, I don't think I've tied a quilt since high school. And I, I can't think of a time. <laughs> so it has been a long time since I used this method. But I really loved kind of getting back to the roots of it and using that uh, method. And I wanted to follow the pattern as you had written it to honor your grandma. That was really important to me. And I, I loved doing it. So I think you can see these little ties. I just used pearl cotton. Here it is. Just use some pearl cotton. And if you're working with pearl cotton, you just need like a bigger eye needle. And so this is a chenille needle with a nice large eye, size 22. And it worked great. And, yep. and we'll link to those in our description too. Yeah. So we'll, we'll make sure you can find those easily. And I did go ahead and tie at every junction, but Brittany told me today that I probably could have done every other, <laughs> which would have saved me some time. So, um, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. And so it's just, it, it does kind of gather up on the back, but you can see those little tie marks and it just feels homemade and, and, you know, special. And I think that's the beauty of what we do as quilters. We don't need everything to look completely perfect. That's right. Um, that, that handmade personal touch is important to it. And that so. handmade look is perfect. It actually, is exactly. All right. And so Brittany, I want you to take it from here and talk a little bit about how you chose to bind. Because truly, you could bind this however you want from this point. Traditional binding would work just as well. You would just trim it up like you would a normal quilt top and add your binding. But you yeah. decided to use the backing and pull it around because that's how your grandma did it, right? Yes. Okay. So this is the quilt. You can see the backing and then... The binding. So she took her backing, folded it over to the front of the quilt, and then hand stitched it onto the front of the quilt. And so I have never done this before. So I sort of experimented with a few different, a few different tries. And um, essentially, you are going to just trim away the backing uh, from the quilt, and then you'll trim the batting as well. So then you're just going to fold it over and um and then stitch it to the front it's super quick yeah. i don't i'm why don't we do this more often it's so much quicker i know i was thinking about that because i for sure wanted to try it because i also had never done this method and so i was like all right i'm gonna do it i'm, I'm gonna follow all the way through the way that she made it 
Um, and so what you did is you went ahead and trimmed all the way around batting and backing an inch, right? Yes. And then you come back with your scissors and you cut away your batting to that uh, seam edge. And so I just made sure and tried to keep my backing flipped completely out of the way because you don't want to risk cutting into that. Sure. That's the danger. <laughs> but as long as you're careful, and I found it like if I just held this in my lap as I was trimming, I, I was sitting when I did it. And as long as I held it this way and kind of kept the weight of the project down, I didn't have any trouble. And so I just used the front edge of my scissors and just went a little bit at a time to be safe. And it went really quick. So you can see, we're just going to trim across there to get that out of the yep. way. Yep. So you're not trimming through your stitch line or anything crazy. Nope. You're, you're basically trimming equal to your seam allowance on your puffs, Perfect. you know? Um, and then just, you can see here where the uh, backing is hanging over. And I'd love folks, tell us if you've used this method before yeah. and how many times you've tied a quilt and how many times you've used the backing. Well, another reason I was excited about it, uh, to be honest, is after we decided to do this, I saw a question come up in our MSQC All-Stars group about, hey, why don't we do this? What, what is wrong with this? And nothing at all. Nothing is wrong with it. It's a great option. The only thing that I can say is if you're making something that you really, really, really want to be an heirloom, which feels silly to say because you have one that's made with this method, but mm -hmm. having those extra layers of fabric can prolong the life of the um, binding. That's really it. Just, you know, having that extra layer to protect it. But Brittany has a beautiful one that her grandma made her that has held up well. And so there's no reason to let that deter you if this is the method that makes sense to you and is easier to you. Um, quilting should be easy and fun. It should not be stressful. So I, I loved trying this. And so let's, let's talk a little bit about it because you just did nice big stitches, running stitches to finish it off, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, so you fold the bat or the backing in to, so that the raw edge of the backing aligns with the raw edge of the quilt top. And then you fold it again over so that you're hiding those raw edges. And if you want a wider binding, some people I know like the chunkier look, mm -hmm. you, um, you could probably just skip trimming the batting and then fold the batting with it. That way it gets more of a border and a more oh, like- Oh, that's a fun idea. And Thanks. it would just be nice and thick. <laughs> It would mm -hmm. probably work really well for the puff quilt because you're already working with so much loft. It would fit with it nicely. And yeah. so, yeah. so we, so, just, yeah. yeah, we've just folded that over just like Brittany was saying. And I've got um, some pearl cotton here with my, my same chenille needle. And you can see here, we'll just do a running stitch along that edge. Oops. Got some bulk there. Now this doesn't want to pop through, of course. There we go. And just some nice big stitches. I really love with this quilt, there's such a good mixture of different techniques. So the puffs obviously have a, not, a lot of really nice texture. And then whenever you add the hand ties, that gives it texture on the back and a really neat sort of X stitch on the front. And then with the hand stitched binding with that running stitch, it just adds sort of that extra handmade cozy feel. I agree. So there's a lot of really neat techniques that you get to practice and try out with this quilt. And it just makes for a really interesting and fun project. I agree. And I think because of that, it's a great quilt for a beginner. It's a great uh, quilt to do with kids. Like I know my daughter would love to make one of these with me. So um, you know, I'd love to sit and, and make one and maybe I, I can make a big one for us to cozy up with under the couch while we're watching movies. It's just, I really thoroughly enjoyed it. And I have to say, I was a little nervous to get started. I, I just wasn't sure because it's such, um, it feels like such a leap, I should say, from traditional piecing, which is more my love. You know, I love the piecing more than the quilting, but I enjoyed every step of this process. And so once again, I just want to thank you for coming on, being willing to, to do this remote and work through, you know, technical glitches and share this with our amazing audience. And I hope you all uh, have loved it as well. I 
I think it's been so fun. Yes. So and make sure you share with us and with Brittany the quilts that you make using the puff quilt pattern that she has shared. Check out the description box below for links to Brittany's website at Lo and Behold Stitchery. And remember to make this particular project, you just need two charm packs, a little bit of yardage for that background piece that's cut down half an inch smaller, and then some backing and yeah. you'll make a beautiful puff quilt too. Yep, it comes together so quickly. And so Brittany, um, Liz mentioned your website. You also are very active on Instagram at Lo and Behold Stitchery. So you guys can, if you're on Instagram, you can follow her there. She shares uh, beautiful projects. You're, she has uh, a beginner quilting academy that she has sometimes, which is great if you're just getting started and incredibly beautiful um, quilt patterns. So be sure to check it out. Brittany, thank, thank you again. Thank you so much for being here. We hope you all have a wonderful week. And until next time, we'll see you later. Thank you so much.